first, I want to say thank you for putting up with shuffling the schedule around this week. Because no worries. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're unaware, for the past two days, I have been so sick. You you don't you don't know how sick it was it was magical really oh it was it was okay one day Did you turn into a unicorn that poops glitter slime no I was all right early on in this all I had was like a scratchy throat and fatigue and sore muscles and all that and I suddenly decided I had to clean the kitchen. Okay. I don't know why. I felt like hell. I wanted to die. And yet there I am in there washing the dishes going, why the fuck am I doing this? But I did it. And then, Yay. and then when it proceeded to, to the everything wants to come out of my nose stage. Um, first of all, my teeth hurt because my gums were swollen. I don't, why are these connected? Why are these parts of my head? They have nothing to do with one another, and yet... I know it's real bad when my hair hurts. <laughs> like, literally, every time my hair moves, I'm in pain. Because my whole scalp is sore. That was a fun one, too, because I regularly get migraines, and I got a migraine in the middle of the sickness. Nice! So, I said, fuck it. And you can't really see those, because they're green. But Dayquil? Nyquil. Oh, Dayquil's orange. Nyquil was the you know fuck it. Nope. It's the nope button. It's the <laughs> just you're done. Just fuck it. I I would rather be in a coma than be alive I will right see now. You tomorrow. And and then I think it was either Monday night or two it was it was like Monday or Sunday night. Middle of the night, something popped in here right in here and i realized that instead of the normal leak slow thing that i was constantly wiping and snorting away it was suddenly got much faster on this side oh did you burst a blood vessel oh did i wow i've done that you blow your nose too hard and you burst a blood vessel in there the, so i have one nostril that's saying blow me i need to get i'm, I'm clogged up get and yeah, the other one's just like oh and oh god, the worst part about having a nosebleed and facial hair. Oh. It just I've never had that problem. No, it just goes and then it wants to go everywhere and it's awful. And I just had this I was just like blah just this <laughs> you were that fucking rejected cartoon we show all the time. Yeah. Oh, 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 that was my nose. That sounds Fun. It was not. None of this was fun, which is why we're two days late with this. But don't worry, I was I was suffering. I'll make you all suffer too. Yeah, I mean, I did miss American Beauty Star tonight. Do what? Which is huh? a show I'm confident you've never heard of. Nope. It's I... a new competition show with like makeup and hair artists, and Ashley Graham hosts it, and it's so tacky. Everyone on it, except for Ashley Graham, is so tacky. Why do you want that? Because it's all like really good hair and makeup people. And sometimes they do shit that's not tacky. Sometimes. Okay. Tell them about the other show. Other show? What? Yeah. What is Ma what Marriage is? Boot Camp? Oh, well, he knows edition. we watch. Yeah, Marriage Boot Camp this season is all hip hop stars. So we're sitting there and Dan's <laughs> like. Because we always watch Marriage Boot Camp reality stars and make fun of the people because we're trash. I'm trash and I dragged him in with me. So we're watching the first episode and Dan's like, yeah, but if we make fun of this show, are we racist? And I'm like... Tara, I want to thank you and Dan because it's viewers like you that make YouTube viable. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck else is on to watch? Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right. Intro time. Did you? I have to send you a link because I'm not sure you saw it. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong? Crazy. And, um. 
Someone did something this week I didn't think was possible. I did not realize this was actually a thing that could happen in our society, but apparently it is. Tara, did you know? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I saw that one. We'll get there. Okay. Did you know it's possible to get banned from Walmart? Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't until everybody on Twitter sent this to us. Woman! It was, it was a tsunami of links. <laughs> Everyone's like, it's... Everyone was like, this sounds like Nash and Tara. And you were right. This is a job for those assholes. Woman banned from Walmart after riding cart while drinking wine from a Pringles can. Uh, I mean... That's a lot. That is... That is that is spectacular. My immediate question was I'm not a small yay. But in my experience, wine generally comes in a receptacle. Like you yep. don't go to the liquor store and they pour it in your hands. No. It generally comes in its own little right. receptacle. Yeah, but if you're classy, you don't just drink it out of the fucking bottle. <laughs> <laughs> And if you're in Walmart, nearest fucking thing, I mean, Pringles can. <laughs> my dad did have serious attitude about drinking beer out of the bottle. And every time I drink beer out of a bottle, I hear my dad yelling at me, get a glass, you look like a tramp. But he didn't have that problem with wine. Police were called. I feel like if you're going to ride the handy cart around the mall Walmart drinking wine, <laughs> fuck it. Police were called to a Walmart, Texas Walmart, after a woman was reportedly drinking wine from a Pringles can and riding an electric cart in the parking lot. Officers, in the parking lot. She wasn't even in the store. Officers responded to a call around 9 a.m. about a suspicious person wow. in the store's parking lot. The Early call day, all day. Investigators found the woman at a nearby restaurant and told her she was banned from the Walmart. The caller said the woman had been riding the store's parking lot since 6.30 a.m. Drinking wine from the potato chip can. <laughs> what has happened to your life? Some people Look, drink more all day drinking. Some people Before noon. You got to cut that shit with orange juice so you can say it's a mimosa. Some people drink more alcohol before 9 a.m. than you drink all day, Tara. <laughs> yeah, because on most days I don't drink any alcohol. Well, and see if this that was fucking like... lush has two whiskeys every night. <laughs> Me? Not much. And if that was the plot of like a sitcom, nobody would believe it. No, everyone would be like, this is a if you put that on like Superstore. Or be like, that's ridiculous. That Super, would never happen. Superstore needs a, some more realistic storylines based they on us, actual. They need us on the writing. Actual team. fucking customers could be like, that never happened. The fuck it didn't. <laughs> we have receipts. <laughs> have you assholes ever worked retail? We've been in the fucking trenches. Because this this doesn't surprise. I swear, I swear to you, the Walmart staff were in there going. I give you five bucks. She falls off in twenty minutes. I'm in on that. <laughs> so what are you gonna do today, June? Shoot, I don't know. I'm just gonna go right around the Walmart, have some <clears throat> wine. All my glasses are dirty, though. I'm just gonna put them in that there Pringles can. A Pringles. June it's six morning. Yeah, well I overslept. I'm I... behind on my drinking. I gotta get started. Is she banned from all the Walmarts or just this one? Probably just that one. Just that one. <laughs> I don't think Walmart's given up a fucking dime as a corporation. Like, she might buy a candy bar once a month. And if retail has taught me anything, it's that a corporation will put up with a fucking piece of shit customer if they buy a candy bar once a month. This is this is like a Nashville country song came to life. Yeah. Just it's it's like someone who did someone make a wish? 
Was someone listening to Brad Paisley and and, and there's a star was falling and <laughs> This is some redneck girl's fairy godmother. <laughs> Just waiting on her to show up for work. Oh. So I'm... she can bring her the mulleted man of her dreams. Okay, this next one, we got video for this one. And, um... Th there is a euphemism regarded insects that, um... I'm trying to think of a delicate way of putting this. And I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. Um, Delicacy well, is not your forte. It's not. Let's let's put. The, I'll put this to you, Tara. Are you aware of the concept of the doorbell? Like on a house. Yeah. Um. Well, let's just put. It, is there another meaning for that? It's a, a very gentle way of of referring to the clitoris. Oh, oh. Satan's doorbell. There you go. <laughs> You know, you gotta pay, you you gotta ring the doorbell. You gotta ring the doorbell. Well, I think this guy got the euphemism a little bit wrong, and let's get the video on here. God, um, what does it have to do with insects? What? You said there was a euphemism for insects. For se for sex. Oh, okay. For sex. Okay. I I. I misheard you then, because I'm like, I'm lost. So, th this gentleman... He is, uh, licking the doorbell. I think he got his wires a bit crossed. He's practicing. He does this for three hours. Three hours of this. Well, don't coat your doorbell in CBD oil and fun dip, <laughs> I guess is the lesson here. Salinas, California. Police are trying to track down a man who spent three hours licking a doorbell at a California home. Thought I'd say it all, but this takes the cake. Ne neighbor uh, Francisco Estrada told uh, KION. Surveillance cameras caught uh, Roberto Daniel Arroyo in the act. The uh, Dungan said they were not at home, but their children were inside the house sleeping. Police say a newly installed surveillance system helped them investigate the case. I, I don't like watching this video. It's not, It's just, it's like, what, what happened here? What were and he's you going at it with all the devotion of a cat licking its asshole? I, he is, man. <laughs> For three hours. In what universe is that fun? And now I'm sitting here thinking, is it possible to chafe your tongue? Now we have to think about it. We have to fucking think about it. For th I mean, pro well, it's doorbells are smooth, so I don't think that would be an issue. Yeah, but that shit dries out. Those muscles do get tired, though. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. have you ever had your tongue get really tired and get sore? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> I felt my head turn. Yes. Okay. Um. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. I mean, I respect your devotion to practicing, <laughs> but just like glue a chickpea to a paper plate and practice. <laughs> that is that is just creepy as hell, though, because it was on one of those uh, internet connected doorbells with right. the, with the. So and imagine you have to burn that now, honey. <laughs> let's let's check in on the kids, and you pull out your smartphone, and there's that for the entire, and you're like. You're racing home at light speed the entire time. He's just going and going and going. No, you're nuking the house from orbit. Oh, God. Well, like, my sister has one of those, and my nephew has the app on his phone, and just at random times at, like, family events, he'll just, like, check on the house. Like, because it tells them, like, when their dog walker shows up, and he'll be like, oh, 
Zoe's going out. Or he'll just be like, look at my front door. And I'm imagining my sweet <laughs> cherubic 13-year-old nephew pulling up and being like, oh. oh. I'm just... Uh, sanitary. And both his parents are super OCD, so they would burn the house down. <laughs> Of all the things to do, and he saw the guy clearly look straight into the camera. For three hours. Three hours. I really want to know the motive on this one. I do too. I really, I've seen this and I want to know the backstory. Like what this, drugs do you have to be on? You know, the, you know those little memes of caption this? Like yeah. I want to know. I want to know specifically what cocktail of drugs produces we, this reaction. We've got to follow up on this because this is scary. Oh, yeah. this this is worse, scary. Oh God. Okay. Um, this might be the stupidest thing I've ever seen a human being do to themselves, and that's saying a lot. I I have seen people do strange shit, like the colloidal silver stuff. Have you seen that? Yeah. Where they take so much that they, they turn that guy turned blue. Turn blue. Look like pop a fucking Smurf. Susan Day. When she was on the Partridge family, went on an all-carrot diet, and her skin turned orange. I have seen people do weird shit in the name of health and, and supposed cures. This! This is the weirdest. I, by, I, th I can't think of anything weirder. Man injects 18 doses of semen oh, into God. arm... To cure back pain. My cousin was nice enough to send this to me because it happened in Ireland. I don't know. I don't see the correlation, though. In a new case study, Irish doctors report the baffling case of a 33-year-old man who injected his own semen intravenously for a year and a half. A self-developed cure intended to treat his chronic back pain. Really? It does not appear to have worked. Really? What a shock. After reportedly injecting semen into his arm every month for 18 months, the man finally sought medical attention, but not for his arm. The patient complained of severe sudden onset lower back pain, uh, back pain and lifted a heavy steel object three days beforehand. During his checkup, doctors found a patch of red swelling on his right forearm. After which, the man injected himself. Uh, the man admitted he'd been injecting himself with his own semen using a hypodermic needle he purchased online. This time around, he had injected. That, by the way, looking at that picture, I'm I've a had cellulitis in my arm. That's cellulitis, and if he doesn't get some antibiotics soon, he is going to die. Um. Because that shit goes from your arm to your heart, and then you die. The swollen region grew and hardened around the arm on his, uh, or the area of his arm where he'd injected his semen, and an X-ray revealed an area of trapped air beneath the man's skin. Immediately hosp hospitalized the patient, treating him with intravenous micro antimicrobial therapy. After the man's back pain improved, he discharged himself. So his arm has an erection. Okay, you know, after maybe three months of injecting yourself with semen. After never, never, there is no <laughs> reason, none, no reason why you'd go, you know what I think will help this problem that I'm having? Unless the problem is your arm wants a baby. <laughs> Other than that, I can't think of a problem where you could be like, the, the best way to solve this problem is to buy a hypodermic needle, jerk off into it, and shoot that shit like a jizz junkie. But No! Just, alright, after maybe three months and your back pain isn't getting any better, maybe it's time to think, you know what, this is a little, this isn't working, I should maybe stop. Maybe this completely random, disgusting thing I tried isn't working. And I should just go back to taking Tylenol. And also, the air trapped in there was because he didn't know how to properly inject himself with anything. You have to learn that, because you get an air bubble in your blood, you're dead. Yep, because that goes... 
or it goes. You don't Whoop. properly clean the needle, sepsis. You're dead. You inject stuff into the muscle that's supposed to go into the blood. You're dead. And you got to admire just the ask brave ask Dan. Dan's not that kind of doctor. I was just typing that. Well, technically you are, because you're a psychologist, and maybe you can tell us what the fuck is wrong with this guy. <laughs> well, the only thing I can't, this is the only thing that's been going through my head the whole time. Maybe this guy was trying to outdo the one who, like, jizzed in a cup with the with My, the, little, my pony. little Pony. Like, maybe this is his brother. Like, fun, fun stuff with jizz. One thing I have to admire is this guy screwed up his arm so badly and yet still managed to jerk off enough every day to fill that fucking syringe. Well, probably wasn't his dominant arm. But yeah, that's definitely like a fucking cellulitis infection and this man is going to die. Well, they treated it. Now if he... You know, you know, that's the kind of shit you need to be on IV antibiotics for, like, days. I'm sure the doctors there went, sir, you need to stop injecting semen into your arm. He's like, you quacks don't know anything! But my back pain, sir, I really, <laughs> I really don't understand the correlation. <laughs> what was this supposed to, how was this even supposed to, were the sperm supposed to go and fix his back? I mean, Do they have really little hammers and stuff? Wouldn't you apply the semen to your back? Back? Directly, yeah. It's like, no, you had to make them take the long way around. They got lost, is the problem. Just have somebody jizz on your back, if that's <laughs> what you want, man. you just really be happy you didn't have a headache. <laughs> Head on. Apply directly to forehead. <laughs> oh. That's what all those porn stars are doing. <laughs> they just have really bad headaches. Right. They get the worst migraines, those porn stars. It's terrible. Well, uh, we have... Oh, okay. Berlin. It's more... We haven't had someone do this in a while, and it's almost quaint now. <laughs> oh, shit. Don't sneeze. God damn it. I'm trying not... I got it. Okay. I, my nose was deciding if I was going to sneeze or not. Pasture starts uh, caught smuggling a live snake in his pants... At Berlin Airport. It's, That's what she said. It's been so long since someone tried to, to smuggle things in their pants. I know. It's Back a, to the classics after semen injection. Maybe that'll cure your cold. Maybe you need to start shooting up your own jizz. Just do a line or two. Yeah. Ignore it. No. I'll fix you right up. <laughs> Man was caught steal sneaking a live snake into Germany's Berlin Schoenf Schoenfeld Schoenfeld Airport uh, before a flight to Israel. Uh, officials report the 43-year-old man was stopped at a security check, and I love this. When employees noticed, he carried something in his pants that did not belong there. <laughs> oh, that's putting it very much. Oh, that's that's. It, he could that that's their way of saying he couldn't pull that off <laughs> well if you look at the picture of the snake it's not yeah. it's not an anaconda no police say well even though police say uh custom officials were then called to the scene which is when the 40 centimeter 15 inch boa was found hiding in a small cloth bag attached to the waistband of the pastor's pants see now that's brave uh, a why boa near your dick <laughs> Do you want that? I don't know anybody that wants a boa in the neighborhood of their dick. Do you want that? No. That's like Satan's cock ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work out, man. I would. I just love when they saw a 15-inch snake and they go, no, not you, man. No, what? Really? No, it's not you. Not you. Not really. No. Nah. You, you, you're not we, you're not pulling that one off, pal. Nah. I just, also, I'm pretty sure none of them can do this. Hey, you've been to that show in Las Vegas. You'd know. Yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't like. Yeah. No. There's no no, no prehensile cocks. Apparently, it's not like a cat's tail. They can make a cheeseburger. Yeah, they can do that. They can make a hamburger out of it. 
I told you about the hamburger. Oh, yes, yes. I thought you meant a literal one. I mean, probably. I'm just seeing him there flipping the burgers with a spatula. <laughs> That'll like, show up on Cutthroat Kitchen eventually. Uh, All you can cook with are these 12-inch dildos. How did he get... How did he think this was going to work? Because they like scan... The you know. They scan you when you go yeah. through. Yeah. They have that backscatter shit. While it isn't the same thing as an x-ray, it can see things. Yeah. Also, if you have this ring of... What is that? Uh, it's my colostomy bag. Poor no. snake. The poor snake didn't deserve that. No. Poor little guy. He's a snake's okay. Which is good. But... Oh, I love it. They have a the custom officials. Uh, the snake was taken to a reptile rescue station. They have that. This they, it happens enough. They have <laughs> it that. Enough that they need that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, chief, we need to uh, this budget next year. We need a reptile rescue station. Bullshit. Let me get out the case file, sir. Let me show you why we need a reptile. I mean, I have noticed airports increasingly have little areas of astroturf for your dog to pee in. So, <sighs> why not a little sneak rescue? So, next one. Um, we remember the Tide Pod Challenge. Remember that? Yeah. And then there was the Fire Challenge. Um, what was the fire chat? Just set something on fire? Dousing yourself in flammable liquid and lighting it on a oh. fire and see, yeah. Dying. <laughs> now we have the bird box challenge. Have you watched bird box yet? I haven't watched it, but you, you know, spoilers, by the I way, all the spoilers. Cause that I'm me. It, it, the conceit of bird box spoilers. If you actually give it, why are you watching this show? Um, the conceit of bird boxes, there are creatures that if you look at them, you will go mad. So you ha the only way to get from anywhere in the world now is you have to wear a blindfold. Well. <sighs> U.S. driver in bird box blindfold crashes in Utah. They did not try to drive a car. Police in the U.S. Shut the fuck up. Police in the U.S. state of Utah have taken the unusual step of urging residents not to drive blindfolded after an online challenge inspired by a horror film led to a crash. Teenager with her hat over her eyes drove into oncoming traffic in the city of Layton while taking part in the so-called Bird Box Challenge. Craze has come to from the Netflix bird film Bird Box starring uh, Sandra Bullock. Last week, Netflix warned fans not to attempt the challenge. This week, the same advice came from the Layton Police Department. Uh, he said it was a warning. He th th Lieutenant, uh, Police Lieutenant Travis Lyman said it was a warning. He never thought he would have to give. Don't drive while blindfolded. The 17-year-old driver, her 16-year-old pastor, the ops occupants of the other car all escaped serious injury. Look at that shit. We are a failed species. We're just, we're, we're a failed species. Call it a day. Put up the chairs. Bring on the meteor. We are too dumb to survive. I'm going to drive my car blindfolded and put it on the YouTubes so everyone can see me drive my car blindfolded. Because you know what everybody wants? To be famous for being a dumbass. Well, here's a little update. This just broke like a few a few minutes ago. I just saw this. Uh, YouTube has now said they're banning videos of dangerous stunts Ooh. like this as a result of this shit. Which means... Uh, uh, and what's his fucking nuts running around the suicide forest? Yeah. So, um, Logan Paul... Uh, bye bye that, that might not work out too well for you because he made one of these videos, the bird box was. Not driving, but of course he made, yeah. So yeah, this just, why the... We were really dumb as kids, right? 
Yeah. We weren't this dumb. No. We, we were not this dumb. My, my friend Jessica and I, one of the games we used to play was called Oops, I'm Sorry. And what this game consisted of was literally us standing as far apart from each other as we could get, crossing our arms, running at each other, slamming into each other, and saying, Oops, I'm Sorry, over and over again. I don't know what the point of that game was, but it was a thing that we did because we were bored and we were children in the 80s and we didn't have smartphones. <laughs> That's the thing we did. We just folded <laughs> our arms and moshed and apologized for it. I but just, we used our eyes, though. I just... I just... The fuck? The fuck? How do you win? You don't. You don't win. But just... Just why? This... This... Oh, you're uh, and 17 years old. If this dumb little shit gets a car again, her parents need to be like, you're on a bike until you can grow two brain cells to rub together. Uh, shit, I've, her, her, can't her parents even insure her now? <laughs> can you imagine? How did the accident happen? <sighs> Well, she was driving blindfolded. Really? Because the internet told her to? Like, that might get her license suspended. Just. Okay, yeah. For, uh, your just monthly. Driving. Your uh, quarterly premium is going to be about uh, $6,000. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, we have one. We have one a little bit better. But not. <laughs> you know, escalation. That's what it is. It's not better, but it's 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 an escalation. And this is from Canada. Less bad? No. No. <laughs> Different bad. Different bad. Um probably the worst one of the worst ways I've seen to handle a breakup. Um did not think this would through. That's saying a lot, because Robin Thicke wrote a Creeper album. Man drives into Toronto Porsche dealership after breakup with girlfriend. Oof. Toronto police say a man has been charged after he drove into a Porsche dealership late Monday because he was, quote, having a bad day following a breakup with his girlfriend. Police say they then received a call just before 11 p.m. for reports of a car had been driven through a window of a Porsche dealership. When officers arrived, they located the car that had been driven through the front window. Police say the driver was then seen vandalizing cars inside the dealership. When officers questioned him, he reportedly told them he was having a bad day because of an earlier breakup with his girlfriend and decided to crash into the dealership. And the cops were like, cool story, your day is about to get worse. Time, how did we get from... I had a bad day. I've taken one down. <laughs> to crashing into the Porsche dealership. Which seems like the worst choice of any dealership of looking for shit to, to fuck up. Because yeah. if you smash into like the Hyundai dealership and beat on the cars there, that's going to cost you what? Ten bucks? The Porsche dealership, on the other hand... A lot more money. If you breathe on something wrong, it's $300. See, and this is where we come back to the Gillette ad you were talking about. Yeah. That you were so freaked out about. Like, I'm sorry about your fee-fees, guys. But this is the shit. Because you're not equipped to deal with feelings. Yeah. So you drive through the fucking window of a Porsche dealership because a girl dumps you. Yeah. Because you can't handle your shit. Please say the damage to the window is... I look forward to your YouTube comments. Please say the damage to the window is valued around fifteen dollars to $20,000. Damage to the vehicles inside the dealership is, valid at, is valued at an additional fifty dollars to $70,000. Holy shit, you just got yourself student debt without ever going to college. <laughs> That's you impressive. You having a bad day that day. You have a lot more bad days coming. You oh, dumb shit. That's impressive. 
That is amazing right there. Like, we all do shit when we're mad. Like, I'm a thrower. I like to throw stuff. I don't understand hitting stuff, because then I'm going to be in pain. I like to punish an inanimate object and make the inanimate object be in pain. I don't understand dudes who punch walls, because then you hurt your fingers. Throw a thing. Punish the thing. So I get that. Sure, that makes sense. I... Okay. I get little rage blackouts. I get it. But you gotta, you gotta handle your shit. And not drive through the front of a Porsche dealership. No! That's the word. That is. Go the... home, scream into a pillow, listen to a bunch of Taylor Swift like everybody else. Shit, I promise you, if you'd driven to a junkyard and said, hey, can I take a hammer to a bunch of stuff out back? The dude would have gone, knock yourself the fuck out. I'll give you a list, actually. Yeah! <laughs> they, you might get money for doing it. You might get yeah. paid. Your fury might profit you. But no, you had to go break the expensive shit, and the rich people don't like when you break their expensive shit. They don't. They, they really get cranky. But Jesus Christ, over a man, I was 22, I was 20 as well, I was stupid as well, but not this stupid. No. That's just like... You got you got some unresolved issues. Yeah, because in the back of my head, it was like, do I really want to be in debt for the rest of my life over a bad relationship? No. No. Because I'm serious. That's that's a fucking... That, Dan has seen Tara do some shit. Dan has taken some shit away from Tara. Yeah. No, don't and break this. Break it. this. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, just, I've learned what happens. He has so. more than once been like, just, hey, hey, no, let me just. Y'all need to go to the dollar store and just load up on a bunch of tacky crap for when you're pissed. <laughs> we actually bought a friend. I have a friend who is a really big um, Dallas Cowboys fan for some reason, even though he's from Connecticut. I don't know. And Dallas Cowboys are terrible. Okay. So, I I... I'll believe you, sure. He's also a big New York Mets fan, and the New York Mets are usually terrible. Also so believe bought, you, sure. We bought him for one Christmas a brick made out of styrofoam so he could throw something at the TV without actually damaging his TV. It's just styrofoam cut and painted to look like a house brick so that he has something to throw at the TV. Well, the first thing we've learned this week is don't break the expensive shit when you're sad. No. Junkyards need need part-time labor. You can break plenty of shit there. They won't care. Yeah. And it doesn't cost you a thing. You might be helping them out. Yeah. You could you could that could become like a lucrative career. You could get like a weekend gig. Yeah. Breaking shit. Um we've learned that. Dan doesn't believe in catharsis as a psychologist, by the way. I know. He's given me many a speech on how catharsis doesn't actually work. So that's a whole other thing. But if you need to break shit, just think about the shit you're going to break. We've learned that if all of your friends tie a blindfold around their face and drive into traffic, you shouldn't do it, too. No. Because... I know you know. I know you don't have any friends anymore because <laughs> you did that. <laughs> But maybe you can just make smarter friends. <sighs> We've learned nobody is buying that the 15 inches belong in your pants. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not pulling that one off. Especially if all 15 inches are dancing. <clears throat> We've learned that maybe before you start injecting your own bodily fluids into places that they don't go, maybe you want to consult a physician. Even WebMD. <laughs> Yeah. Although I'm not sure they have a category for that one. Consider the fact that your body has ejected this fluid at a high rate of speed. Yeah. Outside of your body. Yes. And that might be for a reason. Yeah. It probably doesn't want it back. No. Of course, now I'm just thinking Dr. Strangelove, our precious bodily fluids. That's not how that works. It's not. We've learned that being able to lick the doorbell for three hours is not always ex context matters. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one you is that's some creepy shit. 
Get get better drugs, man. Jesus. I would definitely want to move. And finally, we've learned it's actually possible to get banned <laughs> from the Walmart. Which is amazing. I know. I mean, we've we I I have we've seen people set off fireworks in the Walmart. We've seen people fucking driving dirt bikes into Walmart and not get banned. But this lady found the line somehow. But you are not going to goddamn drink Chardonnay without using the proper glass, Karen. <coughs> I mean, maybe if it had been a sour cream and onions can. Maybe. Like, maybe. respect the stemware, goddammit. It's Walmart. 